There is one very special night that comes but just once a year, when we all believe the unbelievable, when we all remember the unforgettable, when we all experience the fantasy of thunder over Louisville. Welcome to Thunder Over Louisville and the opening ceremonies of the Kentucky Derby Festival, live from the riverfront in Louisville, Kentucky. A Fantasy Thunder is sponsored by The Kroger Company. You can always count on us. By UPS, moving at the speed of business. By Coca-Cola, always refreshing, always Coca-Cola. By Tyson Holly Farms, we're chicken. And by Kraft Oscar Meyer, Kraft, bringing you good food and good food ideas. The official Emmy Award-winning broadcast of Thunder Over Louisville is an exclusive production of Kentuckiana's news channel, WHAS 11. Now, here are your hosts, Gary Rodemeyer and Melissa Swan. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the official Thunder Over Louisville broadcast on WHAS 11. I'm Gary Rodemeyer. And I'm Melissa Swan. We have had a spectacular day here for Thunder Over Louisville. This is the ninth annual Thunder Over Louisville. And even though we have had a drizzle almost constant throughout the evening, better this afternoon, I am told the crowd estimate is 400,000 people and growing. Well, in the next hour, we'll be recapping this afternoon's incredible air show, including some spectacular footage of the Harrier jet this afternoon, plus two stealth jet fighters and the ear-piercing B-1B <laughs> long-range strategic bomber. And you're looking at the Louisville Riverfront, lit up for thunder over Louisville and the Second Street Bridge, which will soon be illuminated with fire. We will also be giving you a beautiful bird's eye view of what it's like to jump from an airplane. We will be showing you the skydivers for thunder over Louisville, and we will be bringing you quite a few surprises tonight during thunder. Of course, as usual, there is a flotilla of boats ready to view thunder. You're looking at the Star of Louisville, the dinner cruiser on the Ohio River. And Melissa, tonight we welcome back our friends at WTVQ in Lexington, Kentucky, where this broadcast is being simulcast. And uh, we want to say hello to all of those of you who are keeping up with WHAS 11's coverage on the internet, www.whas.com where you will see and hear thunder just like on television, but you can do it anywhere in the world. So if you've got family and friends at distant places across the country, tell them to log on and watch Thunder Live. And we are also very excited to announce tonight that for the very first time, WHAS 11's coverage of Thunder Over Louisville is being carried by the Armed Forces Network in more than 150 countries worldwide, including Australia, South Africa, Hong Kong, Germany, Belgium, Spain, Poland, the Netherlands, Vietnam, Honduras, and, well, you get the picture. A whole <laughs> lot of countries out there will be watching us. WHAS 11 and Kentuckiana's News Channel is going worldwide with this thunder over Louisville, and we want to hear from you. If you are watching this broadcast through the Internet or the Armed Forces Network, do drop us a line and let us know that you're watching what you think of what you're seeing. You can uh, contact us at www thunder at whastv.com or you can write to us the long way whas 11 p.o box 1100 louisville kentucky of course that's in the usa 40201 and there are the barges for thunder over louisville making their way in Even the announcement <laughs> of the barges coming in with the big fireworks aboard is pretty spectacular. The crowd here is applauding. Well, that would be a big fireworks demonstration any place <laughs> in the country, but not in Louisville not on Thunder Eve because that was just a tiny, tiny taste of what's coming. And we're going to show it all to you. We have 17 different camera locations up and down the Ohio River from north to south to east and west. We'll be able to show you from various elevated cameras and from Sky 11's power cam hovering over Indiana. We'll be able to show you all the excitement of a thunder over Louisville tonight worldwide as WHAS 11 
brings you the opening ceremony of the Kentucky Derby Festival. And this has also got a lot of fiber optic technology, fiber optics through TKR cable. If you're viewing on television vision, also fiber optics and a wonderful sound system that lets people for three miles up and down the Ohio River hear the music and the announcers, all the orchestration and the songs beautifully which is all computer synchronized to those fireworks. And this year, for the first time, 400 computerized lights, searchlights, on the Second Street Bridge, that Clark Memorial Bridge, where uh, no traffic has been able to travel all day because we have nine howitzers up there. We have 400 computerized lights. We have 108 World War II searchlights. The bridge all by itself will be a beautiful display. 46 tons of fireworks. That is two more tons of fireworks <laughs> than for Thunder over Louisville from last year. And uh, it looks like we have a remarkable, almost looks like a UFO coming in the distance. <laughs> also, 15 tons of fireworks in the grand finale all by itself. This is really spectacular. They say they get bigger and better every year. And this year, just to get bigger than last year, they added the, that extra tonnage on the, uh, on the Second Street Bridge. And also, those computerized lights are new this year. Now, it wouldn't be Thunder Over Louisville without the Second Street Bridge and our compadre, Barry Bernson, who may survive another Thunder Over Louisville tonight. Maybe. Barry? Barry? I'm the king of the world. I'm the king of the world. I'm sorry, I got a little bit carried away with the Titanic theme a little while ago. But you know, Gary and Melissa, tonight being up here on the Clark Memorial Bridge with tons of fireworks and all these lights and howitzers going off, I think this could be the year that this bridge finally goes in the water. And so I am all prepared with my official self-rescue kit and my life vest off the Titanic steerage department and, uh, and my Cheetos. Where are my Cheetos? My Cheetos. I have to have my Cheetos. Thanks. <laughs> I have to have my Cheetos. And you know, if this bridge does go in the drink tonight, I'm sure my close friend Terry Miners, who is in the warm, dry command center, will be able to send out the rescue crews to get me out of the drink. Terry? I'm searching for you, Bernson, but I, I don't see you. Actually, I'm looking for my car so I can make a fast escape when I get out of here tonight. I will. I'll, I'll do what I can to help, Bernson. I'm worried about the cake. This is the, the uh, victory cake we're going to use. And look, I don't know if you can tell by the lighting here, but there are cracks in it already from some of the uh, blasts that have already gone off on some of the barges. But I'm up here in the command center. This is where it all runs right here. And if Barry Burnson does go in the drink, I'm sure that my friend Bob Sokoler over at Joe's Crab Shack can spare him one of those onion rings he's no doubt snarfing on right now. Sokoler? Hey, Terry, it's more than just onion rings. If uh, Barry is on his own, if he is the, the king of the world, we're here at Joe's Crab Shack on the deck. The folks here are just starting to come out. They've been inside for the past uh, couple of hours and they'll drift out here as we get closer to uh, Big Thunder launch. And let me just show you, we've got a great seat here for this. We're about 260 yards from the Second Street Bridge. And of course, this uh, Joe's Crab Shack is brand new, so this will be the first time that this area has been used to see the thunder from, uh, from this area. It'll be gorgeous. We're expecting a big show here. Now, just over this Joe's restaurant here is uh, Rachel Platt, who's made some great new friends. Rachel. As always, Bob, I'm live in Linear Park. We were supposed to be at the Chow Wagon, but had to move because of high water. You can see all my friends around me by crane camera, which is coming overhead here. It's a crazy place to be. First time for Linear Park. About 30,000 people, we think. And the worst thing is long lines for the Thunder Pots. Julie Koenig, I know you're not waiting in line over at Buckheads, are you? Would you believe it or not, about 10 minutes over here. A lot of folks here obviously have already had too much to drink. You'd think it's Central Avenue on Derby Eve, but we're actually at the Buckhead Mountain Grill, a reject from the Hair Club for Men, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, we have a great view of the Second Street Bridge. We'll be bringing that to you throughout the night. Kirby Adams also has a great view on the Belvedere. Hi, Kirby. Hi, Julie. Yes, we do have a great view. And you know what? We're being treated to a lovely mist here rather than a terrible deluge. And that is because I believe Brother Bob, the Franciscan friar from Mount St. Francis, gave us a little help, didn't you? Well, I was asked last night by Mary Kay to uh, have the friars pray for good weather. So I went right into the chapel and lit a candle at St. Anthony's altar. and said, St. Anthony, you're in charge of weather, and so he's done a pretty good job so far, I think. He's done a fabulous job, and thank you very much. And by the way, Mary Kay is the producer of this show. I do have to ask, though, Brother Bob, does the thunderbolt hurt? Uh, just 
wears on you after a while. I'm looking for a little aspirin in a few minutes. Sorry, right, but you can't take it off until thunder is no, over. No, no thunder so, rules. Thunder rules. Thunder rules. You heard it here, Gary and Melissa. All right. Well, thank you very oh, much, Friar Bob. And I think that um, it has worked because uh, we have not had a downpour. We have uh, had no, a... No, I think he uh, needs to keep praying, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case, keep lighting yes, those candles. Lighting and we all may need some aspirin when this is finished because the, the vibration just goes through this vel Belvedere, uh, through the concrete, and you can feel the fireworks as well as see them. Thanks to all our Thunder reporters. In addition to our reporters, another 11 cameras have been posted high and low all around Thunder over Louisville for the very best view of this spectacular event. So let's take you around. Here's just a few of those vantage points. Here's the view of what it looks like to stand just a few feet away from the, fire from the fireworks launching pad where tons of pyrotechnics are detonated and our man Donnie Rourke is out there. And another type of barge, the skydiving landing barge. You'll see uh, some relieved skydivers as they touch down if they get to uh, make their falls this evening. That barge is 150 by 30 feet and uh, they don't want to land in the water. They want to land on that barge. Dan Boyle is there shooting that for us. Now here is a signature shot. This is the spectacular shot from downtown Louisville, Trinity Towers, which gives us the illusion of the total city exploding during this gargantuan fireworks display with buildings in the foreground. As you can see, there's the Providian Tower, uh, the other towers in downtown Louisville, and you will see the fireworks explode above these buildings over the Ohio, Ohio River, and, uh, and it's just a remarkable uh, shot from Tony Walletta tonight. If you have seen that in the past, it is wonderful. Always on the move here on the Belvedere is our crane cam, which provides sweeping aerial shots over and above the Ohio River, downtown Louisville, and, of course, the skyline with those beautiful fireworks. Lynn Todd is on crane cam again for us this year. Thank you, Lynn. And here is WHAS 11's exclusive bridge cam, where you'll see the fireworks and the light stream past the top girders of the bridge for a spectacular shot that only you at home home can see and believe it or not we had some trouble with this camera earlier <laughs> in the week and a very very brave soul I wish I had his name <laughs> had to climb to the top of the bridge to fix the camera so you at home would have this spectacular vantage point. Now look for some head-on shots of Louisville and the skyline as well as the throngs of Thunder viewers living in the southern Indiana area from these Thunder camera locations in Ashland Park and on the Ashland Oil Pier. Brad Noop and Paul Mulisso are over across the river tonight in Indiana and there's the skyline, a lovely view. And here's the view from the 18th floor of the Galt House where you've been following the aircraft, some up close and personal views from the 18th floor there. And last but certainly not least, the exclusive power cam from our Sky 11 will show you the big picture from the sky with rock steady aerial photography. News Channel photographer Paul Kucharski, Mr. Cooch, up aloft in Sky 11. And now as we anticipate the wonderful fireworks that we're about to see this evening, we want to turn to something that's very near and dear to our hearts. Over the past year, WHAS 11 and Kentuckiana's News Channel lost a very dear friend who was very important to us here at Thunder Over Louisville. Our aviation expert last year and in years past was Jeff Ethel. He was an aviation pioneer and historian whose father was a World War II pilot, and Jeff went on to write more than 60 books and untold aviation magazine articles. He logged more than 5,000 hours of flight time in 215 types of military aircraft, but last year he was killed. Jeff was also a regular on aviation television programs, including our coverage of Thunder Over Louisville. A friend of his wrote that, quote, Jeff was, in a way, one long-delayed casualty from the war. He joined the boys he wrote about. His plane ceased to be an heirloom and became history. We now go to our tribute of our friend, Jeff Ethel. My father flew P-38s in World War II and then flew Mustangs in the Korean War. And when I was three years old, he used to take me out to Johnson Field where we lived and he'd stick me on his airplane. And my mom was right on the side of the nose where that is. And the name Jeannie was right across it. And I thought everybody's dad had a ramp full of Mustangs. Hey, everybody's dad's got 20 Mustangs on the ramp. Um, so I grew up with the feeling that uh, this was a part of my life. Uh, I looked at his scrapbooks. I did all kinds of uh, dreaming about flying these planes. So from the very beginning, I wanted to fly P-51s and things like it. Dove upon the wind of heaven. 
heaven's love Past the planets and the stars Leave this lonely world of ours Escape the sorrow and the pain And fly again Fly, fly, do not fear Don't waste the breath, don't shed a tear Your heart is beyond, your soul is free Be on your way, don't wait for me Above the universe you'll climb On beyond the hands of time The moon I think it's very important that people restore and fly these airplanes and present them to the public in air shows. If we don't, we're going to forget, and we are forgetting at a rapid rate what happened 50 years ago when men and uh, women were willing to go halfway around the world and die for a cause, die for freedom against some very, very horrible governments. It's important we remember the sacrifice. If we don't, we're doomed to repeat it. And Jeff is survived by his wife, Betty, and his children, David, Jennifer, and Julie. Jeff was 49 years old. I'm Gary Rodemeyer with Melissa Swan. Welcome back to your only official Thunder Over Louisville station, Kentuckiana's news channel, WHAS 11. And today's Thunder Air Show, The Plains of Thunder, was the biggest ever that we've had in the nine years that we've been having Thunder Over Louisville. Kirby Adams gives us a closer look at the aircraft and the people who flew today. They came thundering out of the heavens majestic display of fighter jets, transports, and trainers. And while the planes are the draw at any air show, the men who pilot them are the heart behind the spectacle. Guys like Captain Matt Heal. He has the enviable job of showing off his F-15 in air shows around the country all summer long. We'll do between 30 and 35 air shows a year. It's pretty much every weekend from about uh, the beginning of April through November. And guess which air show is a favorite of this season pilot? The Thunder Over Louisville is, uh, is absolutely one of the, uh, the best air shows in the country. Uh, it's widely known by everybody. It's been going on for a number of years. The treatment that the city gives us is, you know, second to none. Get this. When Matt flies into a city like Louisville, he brings along his yeah. own announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see now Matt Beals inverted at 500 feet as he passes over show center. I guess the Air Force doesn't want any mess-ups. And anyway, John Mahaley says he likes leaving the flying to Matt. We have uh, rules about uh, when we need to go to bed before the day before we fly and all that kind of stuff. And since I'm only reading, I can kind of, you know, <laughs> bend that rule a little bit. And backing up these two hot shots, a local guy. Their crew chief was born and raised in Kentuckiana. I was born downtown at uh, Methodist Evangelical Hospital. I went to high school in... Eastern, Eastern High School in Pekin, Indiana, and grew up in Southern Indiana mostly. Mark Rogers was handpicked for this sought-after assignment. Matt chose him to look after his plane and his back. To be on the demonstration team is something that uh, every crew chief and uh, young troop out there is, is striving to do. So uh, I've been real fortunate and been able to pick the best of the best, and boy, they keep me uh, safe. Uh, all the time. And Mark Rogers has quite a plane to look after. Now let me tell you a little bit about the green star here on the F-15 that Matt flew in today's air show. This means that this aircraft was the very first U.S. aircraft to shoot down an Iraqi plane in the Persian Gulf War. And there are other impressive aircraft with local connections. For instance, the A-10 is piloted by Major Brad Ritchie. And the Marine Harrier is being flown by Clarksville's own Jeff Satterfield. 
So not only do we have an impressive array of aircraft dancing through the skies for thunder over Louisville, but a valiant group of men from Kentuckiana orchestrating the show. The American flags fly overhead right now. I am joined by Major Jeff Satterfield, who we just saw flying that Harrier. And I've got to tell you, the Harrier was a big crowd thriller out here. Everyone clapped. Now, I'm also joined by Jeff's parents. This is JR and Pi, and you all have moved to Clarksville. What was that like watching your son out there today? Awesome. Awesome? Yeah, great. Great day. We had a great, great time. Is that just amazing, Terrific. though? You must be so proud of him. Yeah, I think you're right, yes. Yes, I Certainly think. are, yeah. <laughs> and Jeff, what does that feel like to you, just to hover like that? Awesome, Mom. <laughs> it's a, very cool. It's a, it's, it's a great thing to be able to do. It's a jet aircraft, and I can bring it to a complete stop and land, which on a day like this is probably a good thing, instead of landing and trying to stop. Absolutely. Now, one quick thing. Jeff is having his 20-year high school reunion in Clarksville, and you're not going to be here. Anyone you want to say hello to? Hey, Badger, take care of yourself. All right. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for being here as part of our air show. Back to you, Melissa and Gary. All right. Thank you very much, Kirby. It's always great when local people come home, and they're here from all over the country to view Thunder Over Louisville and the flyby of the American flag underway right now, Melissa. Leanne Rhymes is singing America the Beautiful as we watch a beautiful Stars and Stripes flying through the sky. It is a, a really spectacular sight. Let's listen. Leanne Rhymes, America the Beautiful, and of course, the most beautiful thing about this evening is going to be the fireworks display coming up. That countdown continues. So let's go to the command center and Terry Miners. Terry? Hi, guys, and we're having a ball up here. What a beautiful moment that was. A, a nice tribute to America. Look who it is. There's a, there's a guy. He's got an American flag tattooed on him somewhere. You're mayor for life. Don't show us okay. tonight. Okay. okay. Jerry Abramson, how are you, Mr. Oh, mayor? Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, the excitement around here, you know, we have a little bit of wetness, but the, but the excitement is just you can feel it. I mean, this is the kickoff of the whole festival, two weeks, and getting ready for the derby. It's, it's very exciting. When you first started as mayor back in the late 1800s. Yeah, we, we, did, we had wagon trains I remember that came that. down to the water front and there was no waterfront. <laughs> there was no river yet. <laughs> we hadn't done the Portland Canal when Look I first this was man has done. We have a oh, river yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 yada yada yada. Congratulations on all your great years as Thank mayor. Thank you. Next Thank year you won't be mayor, but we're still going to have you on the air because well, you bring a lot invite of Invite me back. Yeah. Zing to I'd this like to I'm, you know I'm I'm a little citizen. I can come back if you'll invite me. Mr. Mayor, you're here for life, and of course you're going to launch the fireworks in a few minutes. We're going to do it. Jeff. He chased that nine-year-old out of here, that Emily that was here. She said, "Sorry, kid, it's my last year as mayor." <laughs> yeah, my turn. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Here's County Judge Executive Dave Armstrong. How are you, sir? Great. Very exciting for the community to oh, really to is. gather. Yes, and, it is. And get ready for this launch the, tonight. The best derby festival we've ever had. What's the best thing you've seen so far in the air today? Oh, this. this well, this. of course, the Harrier. The Harrier stowed the show today. Pretty awesome. Wouldn't you like to um, get see one guy with a hot dog on a coat hanger and get that thing yeah. cooked that way? <laughs> yeah. Be fun, wouldn't, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be nice? All right. Yeah. Let me say hi to Mike Berry with the Kentucky Derby Festival. That's right. How you doing, Terry? All right. Ready to rock again? I think so. I went up today to see the howitzers on the bridge. I thought it was a family from Brooklyn that had gotten lost. But, uh, <laughs> and you were trapped in Indiana for a while, but we got that worked Right, out. but they got me back across. I'm glad you're back. And here's the guy Thank whose you. house we're in. It's Tom O'Hearn. That's He's right. chairman of this year's Hi, Kentucky Derby Festival. Thank you. Thanks for having us over. It's always great to be with you again. We appreciate having the top spot, and we hope we can get back in here again next Thank year. Thank you. Appreciate everybody supporting this great event. Your, Thank uh, you. Yeah, your reputation's riding on tonight's show, so do it you up. Bet right. It'll be great. You can uh, bet on it. Thanks, thanks a lot. Tom, Tom O'Hearn. Thanks to the mayor and county judge and Mike Berry, too. Back to you downstairs. All right, thank you very much, Terry Miners. Well, we were supposed to have skydivers, but the ceiling is Mayor. so low <laughs> and the rain coming down. <laughs> ceiling has dropped from 10,000 feet earlier in the day to about 3,000 feet now. Ooh, and you look can at the see rain, the rain this... down through the spotlight. So people are very persistent. 400,000, the estimate, the number of people here tonight. That would compare to maybe 750 or 800,000 on a dry night. So the crowd, we're sure you're watching at home and you're going to get just as big a boot <laughs> out of Thunder over Louisville, seeing it in stereo tonight. 
But there are some of your friends and neighbors who are toughing it out here on the riverfront. Yeah, so while you're warm and dry <laughs> and the um, rain is diving from the sky instead of people, we are going to show you a little bit of what we did get in today from a beautiful air show because the rain did hold off for quite uh, some time, most of the afternoon, in fact, and we were able to get in a lot of the air show. We want to introduce you now to Sherman Morgan. He's our aviation expert here for Kentuckiana's News Channel this year for Thunder Over Louisville. Welcome once again. Well, thank you very much, Melissa. And Gary. And Glad Sherman to be here. knows a lot about uh, aviation. He writes a lot about aviation and also has flown um, one of the biggest aircraft in the military, correct? Absolutely. The C-5 Galaxy. It's uh, the largest airplane in the military at free world. And now flying a lot of very big planes for U.S. Airways. That's true. I fly the, the heavy metal for U.S. Airways, the 767. So can you tell us, wh what what was the most spectacular thing you thought you saw this afternoon? Oh, goodness. You know, the uh, I think probably the two big crowd pleasers were especially the Harrier and the Stealth. The uh, Harrier. Always big favorites. <laughs> well, as they as they say, let's go to the videotape and we'll show you a little bit of the highlights, okay? Great. And you can uh, you can narrate as we go along oh, here. Oh, outstanding. Hey, there's our B1B out of McConnell Air Force Base in Kansas showing us uh, exactly what our tax dollars are buying and I think we're getting every penny's worth out of this airplane. Look at that beautiful airplane. Now, this had to be the loudest, I think. I think it uh, it did take the prize for most decibels <laughs> on any flyby. He's got his wings swept back there today and uh, on that particular shot climbing out rapidly just really showing us a great job of lighting the afterburners and giving the crowd a, a wonderful view of what a swing wing airplane can do. There he's got his wings forward, showing us uh, some slow flight characteristics, and uh, a little bit later on he swept them back and showed us what the airplane would do in high-speed flight. This, this was so dramatic. <laughs> Look at this guy climbing out of the front seat of that steerman, hanging onto the skid of the helicopter, and I think the helicopter is going to show us a, a rudder pedal turn up here that uh, I was just amazed the guy was able to hang on, but but he did just really a big crowd pleaser. Came back by waving to everybody, and I, I was look at that. Look how he's climbing up, hanging onto that skid, swinging his body back around as the helicopter does a, a hammerhead turn, and then back by, really giving everybody a big thrill in the crowd. This was the uh, Northern Lights demonstration team. This is just a wonderful uh, demonstration of precision flying by this outstanding. Uh, precision flight team from north of the border. This, just watching these guys right here was worth coming to the whole air show. I, I really appreciate being invited this year. This is just a, a fantastic air show. Certainly rivals anything that I've been to and I go to a lot of air shows. Wow, look at that. Just they flew in formation and then one of the uh, pilots would veer off and he'd, he'd thrill the crowd with spirals and turns and flips. That's exactly right. Now here's a local hero, Dale Sign out of my old unit down in Charlotte, North Carolina, dumping 3,000 gallons of water out of the back of that uh, C-130H3 fire bomber. He's really putting on a good show. And you were saying that they do go to uh, not just military missions, but they also help out for uh, all kinds of firefights. Exactly. These, these guys uh, have the number seven and eight MAFs airplanes, the firefighter uh, aircraft, and they put on a great show. Now, here's another C-130 configured for the air refueling role. He's got his uh, drogue chutes hanging on the end of the air refueling uh, hoses out the back of the airplane. And uh, he, at one point, uh, rolled them back in and showed us the entire capability of the airplane to configure and reconfigure after performing the air refueling mission. Just really a good show by the guys. Here's uh, our local heroes, the uh, Kentucky Air National Guard, showing us what uh, formation looks like as they're coming in for an airdrop mission. The guys were uh, in perfect position, lined up just right. If this had been a combat drop, it, I'm sure everybody would have hit the IP with no problem at all. Really a good looking airplane, isn't it? Well, here was one of the big crowd pleasers of the day, the Harrier. There he is in vertical flight. This was uh, Jeff just putting on a terrific show in front of his hometown That's crowd. That's right, a Clark Clarksville, Indiana boy, Jeff Satterfield. I'll tell you what, look at that. It, it could not have attracted more attention if he'd been flying a UFO today. <laughs> and that shot is taken from the 18th floor of the Galt House. You can practically see his eyes right there as he's looking out of that craft. Well, you can, Melissa. Look at that. He's got the gear down, showing off the controllability of that airplane, doing everything basically a helicopter could do. And doing it all with thrust. The uh, It's not showing up in the shot there, but the thrust was going straight down, hitting the river, kicking up a stream, a spray of uh, water 
off the Ohio River, and there he's climbing away to a big round of applause from the crowd. That was really one of the big favorites of the whole air show. It wonderful, was. Wonderful shots with those local landmarks in the background, the Providian Tower and Clarksville and the people along the waterfront. That's terrific. Oh, and that was terrific. Now, one, another noisy entry. Oh, boy, these guys put on such a terrific show today. This is the F-16C. Look at the platform of that airplane and lighting those afterburners. It just shook the desk. It shook... I may have said the uh, wrong thing earlier, but that's an F-16, a Charlie model F-15 doing a terrific job of lighting the burners and pleasing the crowd. The desk was rattling, the, the whole waterfront was rattling. It was just really a big crowd pleaser. And this F-15, uh, active duty military, we've seen a lot of active duty military today as well as, uh, as the aerobatics and all of the... Uh, non-military aircraft. Wonderful support from the military, wonderful support from the folks putting on the air show today, scheduling everyone and getting them in here. This was the assault demonstration performed by the Army. That's a UH-60 Blackhawk coming in. And uh, this was just also really a nice crowd pleaser for the, the uh, everyone at the show. There's an Apache, uh, age 64 Apache gunship, super effective uh, weapons platform for the Army, their big gunship that does whatever they need to do to support the troops on the ground. There we've got some uh, troops repelling out of the uh, UH-60. Look at that uh, chain gun being uh, swung around, actually operated by a helmet-mounted uh, cam from the uh, pilot inside the AH-64. This was uh, really a terrific combined arms demonstration. Everybody watching this on the uh, ground uh, thought that it was really a well-performed show. Just a big round of applause to my old uh, alma mater there, the U.S. Army, especially <laughs> Army <laughs> Aviation. Recently retired from the U.S. <laughs> Army, right? That's exactly right. Boy, what a good-looking airplane. I wish I'd got to fly that airplane. It, it actually came into the Army inventory after I left the Army, but uh, it certainly did a wonderful job for us over in the Gulf, and uh, everything that it has been called upon to do, it has done with extraordinary effectiveness. We were, we were out, uh, not on the air at the time this was going on, but uh, like frogmen out here in the, uh, in the muddy and uh, terrible Ohio River today. That was... Well, that's true. These guys really uh, showed what it was like to really do it, not just talk about it. Yeah. They, uh, I guess it's not bragging if you can really do it. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I, we were off the air, as Gary said, and, and uh, I was just spellbound by all this demonstration. It went on for quite some time, and uh, they took motorized rafts out to the barge, and, and it was very interesting, everything they were doing. And here was one of the big crowd pleasers, the F-117, the stealth fighter, just uh, almost a surrealistic airplane. The crowd just, just all eyes were on this airplane whenever it was in view. Came by, showed us a terrific uh, view of the, the uh, bottom of the airplane, then came back by, banked up, showed us the top. It was just a, a wonderful demonstration by uh, Juan God was the uh, pilot that flew the airplane in from Holloman Air Force Base today, and an especially good effort to get the parts in from his home base to make sure that the airplane flew today and didn't uh, disappoint this large crowd that came in. A lot of people specifically to see this airplane right. that they heard so much about from the Gulf War. Yeah, and this one never disappoints. It's so unusual looking. I think that's why everybody likes to look at it. Oh, it is. It, this is uh, about as close as you can come to a, a UFO, it, it just—it <laughs> looks like a UFO. It, there. Looks, like, it looks like it looks like those uh, fighters in Star Wars that uh, that they made up in Hollywood. Uh, doesn't and it? unidentified is the whole object here, after well, all. Well, that's right. It is a stealth airplane, isn't it? So look at that beautiful shape. Well, well, that's terrific. We had hoped to, and, and thank you very much, Sherman Morgan, for, for all of your so assistance much. today. We appreciate thank you, your, your help. It's great having you with us. And, thank and you, Gary. Please I come just, back again. I had a great time. Please invite me back. Yes. I'll be here. And enjoy the fireworks. It's a spectacular I'm show. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Sherman. Well, we had hoped to show you some real live skydiving at this time, but as we told you, the ceiling has gone too low, about uh, about 3,000 feet, and I moved my umbrella out of the <laughs> way of the camera here. We have to, have to make allowances here. It's very very interesting, though. We were able to uh, pre-tape a piece on skydiving earlier in the day, and let's go to that package now.
that's what it looks to uh, like to skydive. I don't think I'll ever know what it feels like to skydive. How about you? Any interest? Never considered it. No, you know, either. you know, I, I, I really don't even like going up in airplanes no. that much, let alone jumping out of one. I, I want a plane that you don't have to jump out of. That, I think, is the whole object of it. We will be back with more of our 1998 coverage of Thunder Over Louisville on Kentucky Anna's News Channel right away. Stay tuned, everybody. It will be a great event.